Hi there, my name's Jack, and I'm building a card sorting machine. Kind of like these machines here, but hopefully a lot cheaper. The first challenge I'll be tackling is writing my own card recognition software. The software needs to be capable of determining the multiverse ID of any printed magic card. I'm using the term multiverse ID here because I want to know more than just the card's name. It's very common to see two magic cards that look visually similar. But these two cards here were printed in different sets, and therefore have different multiverse IDs. Now that we've defined the problem, Let's get started solving it. In this video, I'll be running through my first attempt at solving this problem, and you'll be able to see that it didn't go too well. But I do think the work is still worth sharing. It shows a potential solution to this rather complex problem. The code that I'll be using for this video is available at the GitHub page, as you can see on the screen here. We're going to be downloading it and running it just as you would if you want to try it out on your own. First things first, we're going to go to the code button and click download zip. We should get a zipped version of the code package in our downloads folder. We can unzip it. And here we have all the code that we'll need to go through everything in this video. I'll start by opening up a new terminal tab and running the Jupyter Notebook command. Once it loads, we can navigate to the downloads folder and click on the file ending in .ipynb. I'm not going to go into detail on how all the code works in this video. I really just want to show the first steps that I took to try to solve the problem and how well they performed. As you can see, the first code cell here just imports necessary libraries and defines some functions that we'll use later on. The next code cell loads in a few variables that we'll need to use during the demonstration. To test our card recognition software, we probably don't want to use every single magic card that was ever printed. So instead, let's grab a few common cards and use those for the rest of the video. The first card we're going to get is Lanoir Elves. We found 23 printings of Lanoir Elves, and you can see information about each one of those printings and their set, as well as the multiverse ID, listed in the table below. It also provides a link to the image via Scryfall. The next step is to save each image scan under a file corresponding to its multiverse ID. After executing this cell, you'll notice that the demo images folder in our downloads folder begins to become populated with card scanned images labeled as their multiverse IDs. Once all of our Lanoir elves have been saved, we're going to repeat this process for a few more cards just so we have a little bit of diversity in the dataset. I included all copies of the card Cancel and Giant Growth, bringing our total scanned cards up to around 70. Keep in mind that the image files I'm using here are considered perfect scans in my eyes meaning that Google's optical character recognition, Tesseract, should have no issue reading these cards, right? Let's find out. The next code cell crops all of our images to show just the title area, and then feeds that cropped version into the OCR. Immediately, we can see that the results aren't perfect. Some of them are doing a pretty good job, but others are left completely blank. Navigating to the raw OCR input images folder shows us exactly what the OCR received and what it tried to read. Obviously, some of these aren't great. Others, however, were parsed correctly. Looking at a few examples that were parsed well, we can see that these cards all have high contrast in the title area. Giant Growth, card 750, has white text on a dark background. Card 1260, again, has light text on a dark background. So maybe we can use this information to improve the results. The next code cell again runs each image through the OCR, but not before adjusting the contrast and brightness to hopefully give us some better results. After executing the cell, you'll be able to see the results printed below. And already, we can see that the OCR is picking up more characters and more words than it was before. The OCR is also picking up a lot of random characters, things that it sees in the card that aren't actually printed there. Navigating to the Processed OCR Input Images folder, we can see the updated and edited images that were provided to the OCR this time. But even after adjusting the contrast and brightness of every image, our results still aren't perfect. While there is certainly more that we could do to improve the results of the OCR, I think for now what I'm going to do is keep going with one of the best results that we had and see what further steps are still required to properly identify this card's multiverse ID. We're going to use card 446168 here as our example. You can see the high contrast edited title block that was provided to the OCR, and the original card scan here. Now because we know that sometimes the OCR results aren't perfect, it's important that we next gather all magic cards that could possibly share a similar result. 
To do this, I'm going to copy and paste the OCR result as well as the correct multiverse ID into the code cell below and execute the cell. What we get is a data frame of every single Magic the Gathering card whose name contains a word that was found in the OCR result. There are 374 cards that contain either the word giant or growth in the card name. Having 374 potential matches doesn't quite narrow things down as much as I'd like, so I'm going to switch cards and see if we can find a better result. If we use the OCR result from card 430-344, Lanoir Elves, we should see that we get less results, this time just 105 potential matches. Definitely better, but we still haven't found the exact multiverse ID of this card. Let's see if we can narrow down those 105 potential matches to just one. In order to do this, we're going to use a technique called image hashing. I won't go into detail on how this works, but all you need to know is that it compares two images to see how visually similar they are. The next code cell is going to take our scanned image that we're starting with and compare it individually to each one of those 105 matches. For each one of the 105 potential matches, this code cell will print the card's multiverse ID and its score. For these scores, the lower the number, the better. A high number means that the two cards that were compared were not visually similar. A low number, as low as zero, means that the two cards were nearly identical. I'm showing you this code execution in real time here because it's pretty slow. There are plenty of things that I could do to improve this code and make it run a lot faster here, but I think there are much better ways to implement image hashing, so I don't want to spend too much time worrying about that yet. I'm going to speed up the video here because the code went on to execute for a whole nother minute. You can see though that the results look pretty promising. We've gotten a few scores of zero and definitely some higher scores too, meaning that the image hashing is doing its job. The next code cell will show us just the top 15 results. As you can see, there are a handful of cards that are tied for first place. The image hashing cannot tell these cards apart. Of course, the right answer, card 430344, is one of the options tied for first place. But the computer doesn't quite know what the right answer is yet. All these cards have equal probability of being a match. So even after all of that computational hard work, we can't even be confident about the right answer. We could continue along this line to hopefully get the right answer. For example, my next step would likely be to crop into the image just where the set symbol is and perform the hash again. Doing it this way would hopefully allow the computer to be able to tell different sets apart, but at this point I really don't think it's worth it. I think there are better ways to solve this problem, and I'd like to explore some of those first. So, in my next video, I'll be tackling the same problem using machine learning. If you'd like to see that, be sure to hit subscribe. I've also included a link below the video to sign up for my emailing list if you'd like to stay informed on project updates. Also linked below is the GitHub repository where you can find the code that I used for this video, so feel free to download and play around with it if you'd like to test it out for yourself. That's all I had today. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.